What I thought we'd do today is a very simple poster Halloween type drawing. We use basic shapes, a couple of curves, and mainly compound shapes. Now there's advantages of using the compound shapes, and we'll go through a few of these just in case you're not familiar with them. So we'll drag out a couple of ellipses, and most of you will be familiar with your uh, geometry compounds up here. So um, add, subtract, intersect, and um, XOR, which is, it'll leave that center section. So let's, let's have a look at both and see what the advantages of doing it that way. And then looking at the advantages of using the create com compound menu up in the layer. It, they both do exactly the same thing. One is destructive and the other one is not destructive. So what do I mean by that? Let's grab these two shapes and using the geometry tools on the toolbar, if we click add, we now have one shape, but you'll notice it is a permanent destructive shape. So you cannot move those two individual uh, ellipses anymore because it is the one shape, as you can see shown in the layer. If we do exactly the same thing, highlight the two with the shift key, grabbing both shapes, click on layer, click on compound shape. Now you'll see it's done exactly the same thing. If you come across into the layer, you'll notice now in this little blue section here that we can control what it's actually doing. So if we were to select subtract, we still have total control of the shape itself. So it's non-destructive, really good way to work. So either way, it doesn't matter which way you work, I prefer the non-destructive way. Uh, that way, if I need to get in and do any tweaking, I can tweak until my heart's content, still have my original shapes. And uh, the other thing you can do when you've when you're using the compound group or compound layer, if you were to then add a third shape and we'll just change the color so we can see it, we can then drop this in to that compound layer. And once again, control what is actually what's happening to that compound layer. So just two short ways, two different ways of using compound. Okay, now we've established what compound shapes and compound layers are. You choose which way you want to work. Like I said, there's no right or wrong. Uh, I prefer compound creating compound uh, layers. That way I can go in and tweak. So what are we going to create? Let's, let's start with the background. Uh, as you'll notice, I've added my color palette. I'm going to use these three colors today. They are your hex colors if you want to follow along and use the same color palette. We'll try and use only three colors. We won't try. We will only use three colors. And we'll build up. I like to start with the background. That sort of sets the scene uh, in my mind of where I'm going with it and allows me to um, visualize, if you like. So let's start drawing out a background. Now, the background, I want it to be a little bit punchy. So what I'm going to do, hit I on the uh, keyboard and just select this orange color. That will be my main background. And then I think down the bottom, around about three quarters, so probably about there, I will drag out a ellipse and I'm going to select this gray color. Now, you're probably wondering why I am picked three. I'm just working in thirds. So I'm looking at the visual. So I want the main focus to be here. Um, if you've done photography, you, you'll uh, understand the rule of thirds. So that's what I'm basing this on. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna add one in the center as well just to help us when we, we start drawing out some shapes to get our symmetry centered. 
we'll uh, grab another ellipse tool. We'll drag it out, and this time we'll create uh, our first pumpkin. So no rhyme or reason here. I'm simply guessing what I'm doing as I go along. So we've drawn a few pumpkins in the last few weeks on this channel. So I've got a fair idea what shape I'm after. So something along the lines of that. And remember, previously I spoke about compounds. This is where they come into play. So layer, highlight the three shapes that we've got here, click on the layer, click on create compound. That way it gives me my one shape. You can do the same with your geometry, but remember geometry on the toolbar is destructive. This is a good example why I don't like using destructive because if I need to tweak any of these shapes now, I still can tweak them just to get a better pumpkin shape. So I'm thinking maybe maybe just drag this out a little bit. Right, there's our first pumpkin. Now that's going to be my main main character if you like. So I might drag that up a little bit more. And then I want to two more smaller pumpkins. So holding the shift key down just to shrink it with the correct aspect. Then what I might do is I might put one here, control C, control V to copy and paste, and put another one here. So straight away I'm looking at the silhouettes to see if I'm happy with how this is going to look. I think it will work and you'll see as we go along and add faces where I'm going. This top section, uh, pumpkins normally have a, uh, what do you call it? Core, not a core where it's been picked off the thing. The top section, I can't remember what it's called. My mind has gone blank. It is late. <laughs> to add this, I will add the donut shape. And from there, we can then adjust the radius of the donut shape. And we're just looking to give it the top of the pumpkin. Might flip it and I might put it on a slight, slight angle, just so it's not too symmetrical. And bring that down a little bit. And then what I might want to do as well is add this into my compound shape. So, as you can see, we've still got all our shapes selectable because it is a compound, but we now have this one shape. Now that I've done that, I realized I probably should have finished the first initial pumpkin before I created these two on the sides. So let's get rid of those, sorry for the confusion. And this shape here is a little bit too perfect. So what I might do is right click, uh, I've double clicked, if you're wondering, double click to get into the compound. Right click, convert to curves. And I think I just want to change the shape slightly. It's a little bit too perfect for my liking. So perhaps something like that little bit more stylized and that I'm happy with. All right. So what we might do is finish this first pumpkin before we add the other two, because any detail we add in here, we're obviously going to duplicate. So rather than go backwards and forwards all the time, we'll do that. Now behind that, I think I want a big moon. So holding the shift key to get a perfectly round circle change to the second color and I'm just going to use the control key and hit the left square bracket just to drag that down uh, drag it down drag it to the back and I think something like 
that will be fine. Maybe a little bit big. I might just bring that down slightly. Okay. Let's maybe create, finish the pumpkin's face. So eyes would be handy. Pumpkin, jack-o'-lantern. Drag out an eye. Once again, we're going to use this orange color. Now, as you can see, I've drawn it behind that shape. So I'll just bring, bring that to the front. There we go. And this eye, I think I want a little bit of shape to it. And perhaps a little bit of an angle to give it the evil look. So let's just, yep, I think that's fine. Now we might add a little bit of shape to this eye. So let's use another tool. Let's use the insertion tool and let's click the inside the selection tool while we have this eye selected. That way, when we draw out a, another shape and give it a color, we have drawn that inside of the eye. So perhaps something like that. Now you'll notice you get this little outline, which is really annoying. See that outline there? That is one of the things I do hate. How do we fix it? Well, click on the eye, give it an outline, and the outline we want is the same color as the pumpkin, and that will get rid of that annoying hairline. Now that we have the eye, let's duplicate it. So we can hold control key down and left click and drag a copy to the right. And then let's flip that horizontally. So we have the two eyes. So something like that perhaps, or even maybe closer. What do we need? Let's bring them in a little bit closer. There we go. Now we need a mouth. So once again, a lips tool. Drag out the mouth, give it an orange. That was the outline, obviously. We need to fill it with orange. And for me, I think these eyes are too low down. So let's take those up a little bit. Let's bring this mouth, make sure it's in the center drag it out a little bit further and i think we want an evil smile so in this case what we'll do we'll right click on the ellipse and convert it to curves then we can grab this center section and drag it down and perhaps drag the bottom section down and maybe even drag these two handles up slightly. So we've got a big cheesy grin. Okay. Now I think we need some teeth. So once again, we can drag them out. So I'm going to use the rectangle tool. Drag out some teeth. Give them a color of the same as the pumpkin. Now with this tone, what we'll do is we'll place the teeth. And all I'm doing is control C and control V on the keyboard to copy and paste. And we'll just add some random teeth in here, just to give it a bit of, bit of character. So I think that works well for the pumpkin the jack-o'-lantern. Now what we can do is highlight, grab all of these shapes, holding the shift key and left clicking on all of them. Now here's another thing you can do. Hit control X on the keyboard, which is the cut. So same thing as edit, cut, control X. Try that again. 
Rolex to cut them. Now, click on the mouth, and while holding on the keyboard, Control Alt, paste those in. And what that will do is paste them inside the mouth. It's exactly the same as using the Insert Toolbar option. And as you can see, that is now also a compound. If you want to get rid of the outline, which we do, make the outline black, and now we have our first pumpkin. And I think that's looking quite good. So let's now, now that we're happy with that one, let's duplicate it, hold control, left click on the, no, don't do that. Highlight it, control C, control V. Let's try again. Let's highlight the entire pumpkin, right click, create a group, now hold control on, control on the keyboard and left drag to duplicate. Move it on the angle and bring it down slightly so it's a smaller pumpkin. And let's control C, control V, move it to the right, flip it horizontally and perhaps add it there. So that's looking quite nice. And if you want a little bit of variance as to your jack-o'-lanterns, this is where you can perhaps move the eyes. And this is why I like compound parts, is because we have full flexibility. And perhaps with this one here, we might control these corners into points. So into sharps. And then perhaps dip this center section down, which now leaves us the teeth, top teeth that are hidden. So we can select these from our layers menu and just hitting the down arrow on the keyboard, perhaps shrink them down somewhat. And then Control C, Control V. Let's add a couple more teeth, Control C, Control V, a couple of teeth in the middle, perhaps even some down the bottom here, just to give it a bit of difference from the main jack-o'-lantern. And there we have it. So we have a second pumpkin. And let's do some more refinement even with this one here. Perhaps this one here, we might right click, convert to curves on the eye. And then this top section will convert to sharp. Convert to curves, click the top section, click the convert to sharp. So we've got pointier eyes. It's just giving us a little bit of difference once again. Perhaps move these eyes. It's not. What do we want to do? Let's have a look. There we go. We'll give it a crazy pumpkin look this time. So have fun with it. That's the idea at the end of the day. There we go. And then just so we've got a bit of... Uh, normality on the two sides normality what do you the similarity is what i'm trying to say double click on the mouth highlight the corner convert it to a sharp and then perhaps do yeah let's create that sharp as well change the mouth slightly change the teeth have some fun there we go. So I, I think that's uh, not too bad. Do they look like pumpkins? Hmm. Maybe maybe we're losing the shape a little bit. Maybe if we drag them out slightly. It's a little bit more obvious, isn't it? Yeah, I think, I, I think that's better. Just drag them out slightly. Maybe bring them up so they're up higher. We can get rid of that line now. Uh, something like that. What else do we need? Bats. 
So we've drawn bats in the in the last few episodes. So let's change the bats up a little bit. We'll keep in line with the scene that we're already running, which is the circles. So I think if we drag out a body, uh, then the lips tool again, we can drag out some ears. So maybe put those on the angle. Control C, Control V to duplicate, uh, flip. Maybe move them in the middle. I'm just guessing here as well. Don't have a reference. So at the moment it looks more like cat. I realize that. Uh, now for the wings. I always try and see if there's a shape in the quick shapes tool that I can use. Other times it's quicker just to draw something out manually. What I might do is just drag them out manually. So click P on the keyboard. For the pen tool, let's imagine what bat's wings look like. Something like this. Here and perhaps back into here. Let's give them a fill color. And I know what you're thinking, David, that looks nothing like a bat's wing, but let's now go into the node editor tool, give them some shape. Once again, have a little bit of fun with what you're doing. There is no right or wrong. This is why I like cartooning. No one can tell you that you are wrong because as long as it looks like what it's sort of trying to represent. What is a bat? A bat normally has a hook, doesn't it? So let's add another node. Add a slight hook in there. And I think we may just get away with that as a bat. Maybe the wings need to be a little bit bigger. Let's duplicate it first. Control C, Control V, flip it horizontally, add the wing to this side. And I think that's not too bad. Maybe make the body a little bit smaller. When I say smaller, I stretched it down. And I think that works quite well for a bat. I might make these little ears a little bit smaller. There we go, there's our, there's our bat. So once again, I've selected all of the shapes. Click on layer, click on compound, and perhaps put him on the angle. And then let's just hold control down, control key down, left. No, don't do that, I always do that. Let's. Um, Click on the bat, control C, control V for a duplicate. Move it in another direction, hold shift, scale it down and just add a couple in that moonlight just for a bit of fun. Turning their rotation around just so they're not all the same. Maybe put one over here. Try and make it a little bit random, otherwise it looks too too set up. Control C, Control V, and then what do we want? Maybe one more. I don't know. One more. Yeah, maybe one more. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe here. Okay. So that's that's looking okay. So it's, uh, it's different. What else do we need? Spooky trees. What do spooky trees look like? Let's start with a rectangle. And then from there, how would we create spooky trees? Let's try the compound tool. So let's try it this way. Drag out a rectangle. Duplicate the rectangle, so hold the control key down, left drag. Select both of them by holding shift key. Click on layer, click on create compound. Now, let's use the contour tool. Clicking on the contour tool, shrink 
drag inwards to create a contour, which is what it's done there, as you can see the orange. And then select one of the lines. And as you can see, it joins. It's almost like uh, goo. Remember that power goo? Or you're old enough to remember power goo. Anyway, goo. It's like goo. So I think this might be a good way to create some organic shapes. So let's see what we can do with this. It may or may not work. I'm actually just guessing at this stage. So double click, control C, control V. What I'm doing is just adding more and more of these shapes and having that compound shape create the, the join, the fluid join is what I'm looking for. So, okay, so that kind of works. So let's control C, control V on that. Let's maybe duplicate it. I may end up hating this, but that's all right. And then let's try that again. Control C, control V, shrink it down. And we're just looking for some of those sort of dead branch type looking things off a tree. Do we like it? I don't know. Let's run with it. So maybe uh, let's thicken that one up. Then grab this. Control C, Control V. Maybe we just need to make it a little bit more organic looking. And the other thing you can do is you're not stuck to squares, obviously. So try rounding some of these shapes, maybe. What have we got? Nah. It's not too bad. Does it need it? I don't think so. Up to you. I'll let you decide whether it needs it. Let's try one more different way. Let's actually grab the vector brush tool. And let's draw out some organic trees and see if we get some better results. So once again, let's add a branch. And from there, what do we need? Maybe some some branches. Still not convinced. It's looking rather amateurish, isn't it? Let's let's undo that. I do not like that. All right. So either stick with the trees or don't. Um, I'm going to get rid of them. I really don't like. I could have spent some more time working out what sort of trees we could do, but I think that there is not too bad for a poster. What else could we do? Well, I guess we need a message in there, don't we? So using the artistic text tool, let's scrub out a, let's write out a, if I can spell, the word Halloween, center that, and then let's look for a nice Halloween font. Oh, there we go. This one's not too bad straight off. Mm. Bangers. Oh, I think I'll go with this one. So, Alibi. I think I've used that before, so that's why it's there. There we go, Alibi. Let's change it to an orange colour. I think that looks quite nice. For a quick mock-up and then what do we need let's let's control c control v and we will call it we'll say affinity affinity tree tree now if you want your fonts to stand out that looks too much so let's find a font that is the uh, a lot thinner, I'd say. So I'm thinking a condensed font of some type. And light 
shrink the size down, don't hold the shift key. Make it the same size as Halloween, so it stands out a little bit. And then perhaps we just need a, a line, so hit the P tool, drag out a line, hold the shift key if you want a dead straight line. Give it an orange color. And then maybe using the stroke width tool, give it a bit of a fatter stroke in the center. And I think that'll do. That's not a bad poster for some quick work. Uh, feel free to, maybe that needs to be bigger. There we go. Let's fill it out a little bit. So there we go. There's a funny little Halloween cartoon. Let's perhaps drag him on the side a little bit. Yeah, that works. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, of course, if you want to follow along and add more detail, I do have a detailed uh, Jack Lantern Pumpkin, which I've made in Affinity Designer. It's in, it's a little bit more advanced. It's using gradients. There we go. Get rid of the middle line. There's a, a, a quick and fun Halloween poster that you can enjoy doing. Send it out to your friends. Uh, if you want to add this as more of the main centerpiece, then obviously grab your pumpkin, bring it up slightly. grab the floor or the ground, bring it up, gives you a little bit more room, probably looks better because it's more center of the image now. And then we have that nice big moon up there. So there we go, hope you enjoyed that. If you like what I'm doing and you wanna see more, remember to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, that way you'll get notified whenever I do a video, I try and do a few a week. Uh, leave your comments in the, in the uh, below because I really do like reading the comments. I, I try and reply to every single person. Good luck with your drawing. Uh, have fun. See you later. Ah, just when you thought it was the end. I did go back and add some trees. When I looked at the final poster, I thought it was missing some height. It was very, very blank at the top here. So I did go back. I just used the pen tool. I dragged out some really, really rough trees, as you can see. Um, nothing to them. I could have cleaned them up. But seeing as they were just, you know, those sort of skeleton trees, it works quite well. So I thought I'd just show you what it did look like in the end because um, you're probably thinking, hey, that poster design looks different to the one you're creating. So feel free to grab some images. I grabbed some references of real dead trees and really roughly drew them over. And I really do think that it just finishes the the overall look off um, the color it could probably be tweaked a little bit so they match i've got a slightly different gray so highlighting these um, i'm not going to run through creating the trees because there's not really much to them grab some references but in the end i think they they really do finish it i've mirrored the two trees to bring the eye into the center so symmetry um it just allows you to sort of focus on that center section uh, that's all i have for there i hope you enjoyed it i'll see you again soon